Well, most businesses are challenged by the coronavirus, but one business that may well see an opportunity is Clean Sea Seafood. And we're talking to the CEO, David Head. David, thanks for joining. Mate, let's talk about this. Um, and let's just position the company first. Clean Sea Seafood, just a, a, in a nutshell, the history of the company. The business started off originally as a, a research and development organization looking to close and breed a, a, a series of species, a yellow, uh, bluefin tuna, snapper, kingfish, and mulloway. Focused on kingfish for the last 20 years, has emerged through a number of challenges during that period. And we really came into this COVID-19 crisis in, in the strongest position the company's ever been in. A very strong balance sheet, coming off a strong first half growth in FY20, up 13% in revenues. Uh, cash flow from operations up 56%. Gross margins up uh, 38%. So really strong start to FY20. And then a very abrupt and significant shift in the global markets took place. Started in late, late February for us, we began to see slowdowns in Italy, our biggest market internationally, and other parts of Europe. And then we've really ended up in a situation for the last two months now, where essentially restaurants are closed around the world. And our business model is servicing those restaurants. Yeah, and last time I spoke to you, a lot of the leading chefs around the world were were really enamoured with your kingfish, and that was a great uh, money, let alone a, a revenue building opportunity. Yeah, look, our, our position in, in, in the food service, high-end food service restaurant markets around the world is, is preeminent. We are the global leader in this breeding and farming of kingfish. We export about half our products. We were late last year awarded the Agricultural Exporter of the Year and then the Overall Exporter of the Year in South Australia. So what we're doing, connecting with our global markets, is working. Um, and our, our challenge is not, if you like, the product or even the, the access to the markets. It, right now, it's just access to getting product out of Australia through on, on air freighters and to the, the reopening of all the restaurants around the world. Okay. I, I noticed, like most companies, the share price dipped. But I also noticed you've had a nice comeback, pretty well back to where you were uh, before the coronavirus hit, around that, that neighbourhood at least. Uh, well, about five weeks ago, we entered into a strategic partnership with an organization called Hofsteth International. Uh, Roger Hofsteth is an entrepreneur in Norway who, who, who runs and operates the biggest salmon processing business. He's, he's also integrated back into salmon and trout farming in Norway. And he exports around about 250 million US a year of, of salmon and trout and other products into North America and Asia, where he's established his own distribution businesses. Roger, through a, a mutual contact in, in Europe, uh, contacted us and uh, approached us about taking a 10% stake in the company, uh, which he did in, uh, in, late, uh, in, in late March. Um, and also, the, the deal was he would bring in some fresh capital, but would connect us to his retail partnerships around the world. Now, this presented itself for us a really unique opportunity. We've been focused on the very high value, high markets, High, high price markets of restaurants. But now we have an, an opportunity to, at a time when restaurants are closed, and frankly, it's unclear what the new normal will look like for restaurants in the coming years. We have this opportunity to take what is a, an extraordinary product and a large amount of inventory now, which I'll explain in a minute, and start to work this through the, the global, the, pre, the, the, the prim, pre, premium global retail markets through our association with Roger. And I think the markets understood that the combination of this terrific positioning in the food service restaurant business with the very large volumes available to us in global retail markets, we think will potentially get the business to, to the, tar the, vo the growth targets we've been looking for a little bit quicker than we perhaps would have done pre-COVID-19. Yeah. It's interesting, mate, when you look at the, the, uh, the success of, uh, of wine brands, today, it's been the, the, the wine brands that have linked into the distribution network of America, not necessarily the quality of the wine, but the ability to, to, to link into the right network that is critically Look, important. The North American market is 10 times the size of the Australian kingfish market, and it's 76% frozen product. So we've got this extraordinary kingfish. We've developed in the last couple of years, I think we spoke about it last time we met, this incredible freezing technology called liquid nitrogen freezing. In fact, ABC Television Catalyst program featured it just t two weeks ago on, on, in Australia. And at the conclusion of that program, they had a group of seven chefs and aficionados of 
sashimi, who all swore they didn't like, wouldn't eat frozen product. And then six of the seven chose our frozen product over fresh. So we know we've got an extraordinary freezing technology. We know the American market's huge and it's biases to frozen fish. And here comes along Roger with his access to, you know, people, the, the big club stores of North America, the major retailers. In one week last week, uh, Roger Hofstadt team purchased our entire North American inventory. And in fact, the sales in one week last week uh, were, were the same as the whole 12 months, previous 12 months. So this is the beginning of a relationship. But the scale of volume we can move through retail, we think is very significant. And this is important because as we're now slowed down our harvesting of fresh kingfish to travel around the world while restaurants are closed, we've been able to leverage this remarkable freezing technology to, to retain value, to produce fillets and loins and other products. And now if the, if the, if the panels and cha ch channels can be opened up through Roger Hofstadt's team in both North America and Asia, we think we can move some very, very significant volumes way ahead of our previous expectations in the next couple of years. Well, anyone watching this uh, is praying for restaurants uh, to be opened up ASA. But it's so important to the future of your business. What kind of insights have you got? What kind of expectations have you got that you've built into the, the, the business plan? Yeah. Going to be forward? candid, we, we, we truly don't know what's going to happen. We've modeled a pretty conservative scenario, as we said in our last ASX announcement. We're taking a, the view that it could be a slow building back up of restaurants around the world. We, we think a whole bunch of restaurants are not going to reopen uh, in cities around the world. We think there's going to be a different level of volumes and sales going through those restaurants when they do open up. So we're modeling our business now to be in a position to be able to not only service the restaurants, but the retail as well. And what will happen to our business is, is we start to see a dropping off of, of, the, of, the, of the restaurant uh, volumes and sales. We think we can get a much bigger pickup in retail sales. That larger scale with the volumes will help us reduce our cost of production, which will, in fact, open up more markets to us. So this is, a, this is potentially a net win-win for us. Your, Nor your Norwegian partner, is he purely in the restaurant space or is he in... Uh, he's overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly in the retail business. He does service some of the restaurant and retail market in North America, particularly the large uh, restaurant chains. But, uh, you know, Ro Ro Roger's, Roger's processing somewhere in the order of uh, over 100,000 tonnes of product a year. Uh, contrast that with our 3,000 tonnes. You can see the scale that he's got is huge. Hmm. Uh, and I guess you, you would have been happy to learn that the Brookings Institute linked Australia, Norway and New Zealand as three of the best economies going forward given their um, beating of the coronavirus and their... Well, it's hardly surprising. I think Australia and New Zealand have, t have taken some... Uh, have got, both got terrific uh, economies and they've all taken a bit of a hit at the moment and we're very keen to see them back up and operating as soon as possible. But I think a bit like Clean Seas, uh, the Australian economy came into this thing in a pretty good shape. Yeah. Finally, what can shareholders expect in the upcoming months as we continue the battle? This damn well, I think the signs are that Australia is ready to start opening the, uh, it, its economy again. I think we will see restaurants in the coming weeks and months start to operate again. I'm not sure I'd say back to normal, but certainly heading in that direction. We're already seeing signs in Spain and Italy of, the, of those, those markets opening up again. Our, our big challenge is going to be the, uh, the getting the product around the world in a fresh state because 90% of all the air freight comes on passenger aircraft. So again, this is why our frozen product becomes so important. I think you will see us slowly rebuilding our retail, our restaurant business around the world, but very rapidly building a new business in retail channels. So I'm very excited that if you fast forward 18 months, two years from now, I think we'll probably be at, or if not ahead of our goals set out in September last year, in our vision 2025, and I think we'll like to see a much, a much bigger and, and larger business with a scale advantage and lower cost. So I think it's an exciting future. All right, David, thanks for joining us and good luck with it. My pleasure, Peter.